So this is the uh, five stage 18.1 um, deuce block. So it's our compressor block that's rated for both the 6,000 and the 7,000 PSI. On this system, they've derated the 7,000 down to 6,600 because of the storage, but it is capable of going to the 7,000. Um, most of your systems that you guys are buying are the 6,000 PSI, which is this, this similar block or same block. A few modifications on the 7,000 pound side. It's a five stage machine. So the first stage is right up here. First stage is always going to have your air cleaner on it. It's going to be your inlet filter. Um, first stage. Second stage is down below the first stage. The third stage is off to the right. The fourth stage is actually stacked on top of the second stage. And then the fifth stage, the final stage, is up to the upper right. So it's what we call the X design. The nice thing about this X design is as you look at it, the cooling fan blows the uh, air across all of the stages of compression so it's it's a uh, very effective on cooling the system down um, on the stages on our second third fourth and our final stage we actually have separators that pull the moisture out so this is an automatic system each separator has its own solenoid and that drains uh, the moisture into the container here so every 15 minutes and at shutdown if you're standing near the compressor you'll see the gauges will actually drop in pressure and that's uh, indicating that this st that stage is uh, draining the moisture into the uh, collector tank so um, on the older systems you'd actually hear that that drain cycle on the newer ones with this uh, with the individual solenoids it's actually a very quiet system you, you don't hear the purge you'll actually see it reflected on um, on each stage. So your stage pressure gauges here are going to indicate the pressures of each of the stages. I mentioned it was a five stage machine. The first stage is always the largest stage. So that piston is going to be about that big around. Each stage of compression gets smaller. And that's how we increase the pressures. Okay, so your final stage uh, piston is about the size of a pencil. So you're taking that same volume of air that's in that first stage and squeezing it down, getting it up to that six or 7,000 PSI, depending on how it's ordered. Okay. And of course, when you compress air, you get moisture and we don't want to put moisture into your cylinders. So that's why we have the separators on the compressor, which then um, the filtration pulls that final moisture out and purifies the air but you're going to get most of the moisture out through the b-drain systems um, this collector will have a float on it and if uh, if the end user the operator doesn't drain this it will go into an alarm on the operator screen telling them to drain the float we do recommend uh, basically on a, a, a schedule typically a monthly schedule that this is drained uh, you can drain it right here um, it does not have to be running to drain it, so you can just drain the moisture off. Um, depending on how much uh, humidity is in the air and how much it's ran is going to depend on how much moisture that collects. So on uh, dry periods, you're not going to get a lot of moisture, but if it's uh, wet, humid, um, rainy, you may get more um, collection of uh, condensate in here. And also the condensate is going to have a little bit of emulsified oil on it too. Okay, so you want to process that or dispose of that, you know, um, where you would put uh, waste oil or, or, or dirty water on that. Um, the compressor, like I mentioned, is air cooled. So we're actually pulling air from the other side of the truck and blowing it out this way. So it's blowing the air across the, the, all the cooling fins. There's intercoolers in between the stages to help cool that air down. And so it's all that hot air is coming out on this side. So the doors have to be open in order to get that cross ventilation to cool it down. There is a temperature sensor on the compressors. So if it does overheat, it'll shut down and again, give you a, a, an alarm on the back screen, letting you know the compressor got too hot. But if both the doors are open, uh, you'll typically, you won't have a problem with that um, uh, cooling it. Now, the one thing and one thing I like about it, SVI is you guys take that into consideration, that cross flow, and you don't uh, position these in such a way that it blocks that, okay? This has got a lot of volume in the compartment for that air. So even with the storage on the other side, there's still plenty of, of, uh, of room for that cooling flow to cross, okay? Now, if, if that gets restricted, if there's too much equipment 
or if the compressor's not installed properly, you will overheat the compressor and you will trip that alarm. So that's one thing, um, both for the operator and for the builder, is to make sure you get that cross flow. So one of the things I do want to point out here is that even with this storage, we still got a lot of volume um, so that the compressor does get that airflow across. Okay. Also, it's oil lubricated. And the nice thing about these blocks, especially these, uh, these larger blocks, is right on the front is your oil uh, sight glass. And uh, so it's very easy to see if it's got oil in it. You just look at the front and it's got oil. On the smaller blocks, the 10 horsepower units, that sight glass is on the side. So you may have to either hold a mirror up or I usually take my phone and, and uh, hold it up there. Sometimes you can look from the side with a light and look at that oil sight glass. But you always, uh, when you open the door, one of the first things you want to do is make sure that there's uh, oil in it. The oil, we use a synthetic based breathing air oil and they come from the factory already filled up. Um, again, on an annual service, we would replace the oil and the oil filter on that. Um, but from the factory, it's, it's already primed and pumped and ready to go. And there is no break-in period on these either. That's the other nice thing about the Bauer units is you can basically fire them up and run them. You don't have to have a, a break-in period for that. If you do have to add oil, it's right there at the site, at the uh, site glass on the uh, 20 horsepower units. And um, you just uh, fill it between the uh, low indicator mark and the um, edge of the cap there. So you can't really overfill these ones because it'll just make a mess. So, so it does have oil, low oil pressure shutdown, high temperature shutdown. Uh, the other thing I want to point out while we're on this side, that the filters remove carbon monoxide. The Hopkalite removes uh, carbon monoxide. Now, if you're at a fire scene or if there's a bunch of equipment running and it's, um, it's got too much uh, CO in the environment, in the ambient air, and the filter can't process it. This is your carbon monoxide monitoring system. So we're sampling the air. So we pull the air off of the purification. We pull it up through this regulator assembly and we sample the air through this blue hose. Okay, there's a cell inside here that, that monitors the uh, amount of um, carbon monoxide that's in that sampling screen. Now at a fire scene, you may get one or two parts per million, but certainly if it gets above the set point, it would shut off the compressor and tell the operator there's too much CO, the filters can't process it, either need to relocate the truck or, um, or remove the source of CO and maybe an engine that's running or, or something. Um, because the airflow is coming across the compressor this way, the source of CO could be on that side and actually blowing into the uh, airstream and getting into the filter. You know, so it's, uh, when you set up the truck at a scene, you want to make sure that you set it up away from the source of CO or if, if you can't get away from it, at least position the truck so that you're not pulling it in through that other side. Uh, one of the things about the uh, CO sensor is it's got a solenoid on it, so it only opens the airflow when the compressor's running. So when the compressor shuts off, the flow to the CO monitor shut, um, shuts off because you're not running the compressor, so it doesn't need to sample. Okay? Once you start the compressor, it will then uh, start flowing air to the cell. If for some reason there's a failure here, if there's no pressure, no flow going to the cell, the compressor will shut off. Uh, so it, it won't allow you to run without um, sampling air going to it. So at that point, the operator would come up, look at your gauges, but it does have that safety um, feature in there that if, if something fails on the CO system, it won't let you run, or at least it'll give you a, an alarm that there's a, a low flow and then you can solve that before you uh, continue to compress the air. The CO um, sensor does have a calibration kit. You've got two gases for that. You've got a 20 part gas and a 10 part gas and uh, the manufacturer recommends that those be um, calibrated on a monthly basis. Um, so depending on your, um, the operator's uh, procedures, um, on how often they calibrate that, uh, you'd wanna make sure that those, that kit is uh, on the truck so you can do the, the calibration.